problems early on will prevent problems later on. Um, obviously, there's a huge problem around um, pregnancy, delivery, when we should be supporting women to um, support their emotional well-being, their interaction with their child, and also their interaction with their family as well. But in addition to this, we must be thinking of long term and the impact it will have on the women as they're moving through their life and also on the emotional and, and cognitive development of the child themselves. I think that relationship that a health visitor has in a very privileged time in that mum's life is absolutely key for them to be able to develop that relationship with that client, for that trust, for them to be able to tell them the most painful things that they may be experiencing at that time and to help them to find a way through that, to support them into the right and appropriate services so that they don't suffer unnecessarily. You have to really trust and like the person that you're speaking to because it's really hard to be honest and talk to somebody um, about your child if you think they're going to look down on you, if they're going to judge you. I think far too often many women come in sort of around the 8 to 12 month check and they've suffered with depression since the baby was almost born and that's a long time, that's too far for a mum to suffer. Well, if we think about it, 10% of women probably have a perinatal mental health problem and that's probably an underestimate because we don't know exactly how many women are out there with perinatal mental health problems. And these women need support, not only for themselves but also because having um, perinatal mental health can impact on the child, the emotional well-being of the child, the cognitive development of the child and also the relationships within a family. So there's a huge emotional cost to the family, the woman, the child and also to society. Uh, my second child was born, he um, constantly cried and screamed and he didn't sleep, probably slept for two or three hours in 24 hours um, and hardly drank too. I went to my GP numerous times to ask for help, what could it be, I've tried everything, to which I was just asked repeatedly to change his milk. I literally hit rock bottom, went to the GP and I advised the GP that I would be leaving him in his care if I didn't get referral to a paediatrician that same day. Um, he was quite reluctant, but in the end he agreed because I wasn't going to take that child home. I physically couldn't do one more night of looking after this child. I just couldn't keep my eyes open. He started to get help at about that age, seven, eight months old eventually, um, but there was still no help there for me. The GP obviously and the paediatricians weren't realising that a mother looking after a child like this was probably on death's door, flat, hit rock bottom, just couldn't cope anymore. Eventually I got put in touch with my specialist health visitor. Right from day one um, I knew I could trust her. She was very understanding. She used to finish off my sentences for me. She knew exactly how I felt. The first person that I spoke to, even my mum just didn't get it and she said, are you feeling like this, are you feeling like that? I said, yes, yes, yes. Um, so from that day, I've been under her care, her specialist care. Because what it will do is um, evidence what it is that health visitors are doing and the impact of that. So it won't actually be health visitors that are using the scorecard, it will be their organisation and their organisation will be able to see what work is taking place, the impact that is having for mums and babies and therefore will be able to look at improving that service. Sometimes just having the knowledge that you're going to have a visit from a health visitor in a month's time for me has been really reassuring. So I know I've not just been left. They have never said to me, this is what you need to do with your little boy and you're getting on really well now and we're going to discharge you and now you're on your own. For me that would be a really worrying thought. I've got you know, her mobile number in my phone, I know it's there and that's a massive comfort to me. So if ever I get a day where I can't cope with Junior or I can't cope myself, um, Teresa always says just call me.
So the scorecard is something that we want health visitors to use locally. So in their daily practice, they can use the scorecard to measure how their services are working, are they doing the things that they should be doing, are they implementing the guidance, that's national guidance, and they can use the information from that to design quality improvement projects to improve the services they're providing. So the scorecard was developed with health visitors, with parents, um, to identify questions that are important not only for the health professionals but also for the families themselves. And by asking certain questions from parents and from the data, we can actually see where the gaps are in what our provisions of services are and then strive to improve those. I think one of the initial difficulties that we had was actually just locating the person that we needed to speak to because it's something we don't do on a daily basis and it feels a little bit distant from our everyday role to suddenly then become involved. It's finding the right person that can access that data for you. Um, so I think we had some just very primary things that were quite challenging, weren't they, to, um, to find the right person to contact with that. We've, also, we've already been implementing the scorecard a little bit and we've found uh, it's very challenging because the data systems um, are different across the area. Um, the data itself is sometimes not to the level that we would want it to be. It's difficult to extract the data because often people are writing in freehand rather than um, numbers or coded. It's not coded data. So it's very difficult just to pull the data and put into a scorecard. So this is a piece of work we're doing at the moment and it will be a continuous piece of work to feed back into data systems so that we can actually evaluate properly what we're doing. Yeah, I think we were quite fortunate in the area where we are. We had quite a good response rate from the parent user questionnaire which um, had to be distributed once. There was one week in every month where the questionnaires went out. Um, but I think that was down to the support from our health visiting colleagues. So I think mm. it's really important with these projects, you do get your health visiting colleagues on board. What's quite evident on my journey really is the fact that the GPs and the health visitors must speak. I think it also needs to be a lot more structured in how you deal with a mother from the day that obviously they give birth to to right up until now really. I think one of the key lessons is about partnership working. Very important to engage everybody right at the beginning of developing something like this, like a scorecard. You need the families on board, you need the healthcare professionals on board. You have to get buy-in and engagement with everybody. And that means that you're much more successful when you're trying to implement it later on. Mm -hmm.